at 8.05 p.m. on the night of May 11th, 1960, a balding middle-aged man got off the bus in Buenos Aires. After a long day's work at the Mercedes-Benz factory, Ricardo Clement was tired. He looked forward to dinner with his wife and six-year-old son. While crossing the street, a young man politely asked for a cigarette. When Ricardo put his hand in his pocket, two other men jumped out. His wife never heard the screams as they sped away. Who would do this terrible thing? And why? Why kidnap this average man? He wasn't rich. He paid his bills. He was a good neighbor. He loved his family. Ricardo Clement was an unremarkable man. Apart from the fact that his real name was Adolf Eichmann. In 1942, the Nazi bigwigs agreed that the final solution to the Jewish question was mass murder, and Adolf Eichmann was put in charge. It was Eichmann who, from behind his desk, meticulously worked out the practicalities of how to kill 11 million people. I obsessed over the capture of Adolf Eichmann, night and day, for 16 years. In Austria, I became known as the Eichmann, that case Wiesenthal. My daughter Palenka grew up with a father whose obsession with Eichmann seemed more important to him than she was. And finally, years later, sitting in a Jerusalem courtroom, I am finally going to see the monster. A creature whose own obsession resulted in a death toll numbering well over the entire population of Austria. The door opens, and out from the very pit of hell steps a bookkeeper. A timid little fellow with a twitch, a man whose vulnerability was so apparent your first impulse might be to protect him. A bookkeeper? Where's my monster? Where's the devil with the black boots and the snarling dogs? I don't want a bookkeeper. I want my monster. After the incomprehensible bill of indictment is read, the murder of 11 million men, women, and children, Eichmann simply answers, I am not guilty. To say this was unsatisfying would be the greatest understatement in the history of the world. This is all wrong, this calmness, this normalcy. On the break outside the Israeli courtroom, the sun shines, children laugh, train leaves on time, a woman buys shoes. Why buy when there are millions and millions to choose from? 100 truckloads of shoes, 400,000 gold watches, 319 pounds of wedding rings. This, this is a list of items collected at Treblinka. Sobibor and Bugets in just one year. These numbers, I, I can't get them out of my head. How can you? How can anyone? How can the sun shine? Don't you know who's in that building? Don't you care? How dare you think of other things? Life cannot just simply go on. But life does go on. Most people in this city have lost loved ones because of that little bookkeeper. But life does go on. I did not capture Eichmann. An Israeli team of Mossad agents did. But to prevent an international incident with Argentina, the world was not allowed to know that. The search for Eichmann was a, a jigsaw puzzle, solved with the cooperation of many different people who didn't even know each other. I am proud to have added a few pieces.